Okay, so the next stage is to uh, check for a signal being present. Um, it doesn't define what a signal is. I'm guessing it means a voltage or possibly a frequency generation. So we'll use a scope on that and see what comes out. So remove AA active from the unit, which I've already done in the previous step. Um, should be on one kilohertz. Doesn't say, but anything else should be on. I don't know. Still on capacitance, I guess. Leave it on hold. Yes, yeah, turn it on. And we need to check for a signal at A7, U9. So that's A7, U9, pin three. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, um, that's in there. Uh, where's U9? U9 is here. Pin 3 is there. Um, I'm going to have to use a riser card. Luckily I've got some. So you can see I've purchased some riser cards in preparation for this moment. Because I knew I was going to need something. So let's drop these in. Uh, U7 is that one. And we'll find if they actually fit. It feels like it went in. A bit tight. But it seems to be going in. That's it. Give it a bit of a lock. All right. Get it in these ones as well. Obviously, a bit of an issue there of the positioning. I want to lock out slightly more. Here we go. Okay. Those are hopefully all right. So, we'll try this. I haven't tried using these rows of cards before, hopefully they're not shorted out like the ones I had on the fluke. We'll find out. Um, so I need to look at A7, U9, pin 3. I'm guessing I need a ground from somewhere. Um, yeah, no, probably reach. Take that off. Turn it on. No bangs. No display, but it's because U8, the A8's not in there. So U9 pin 3 is that one there. And there is definitely a signal. Come on, where is it? Here we go. Alright, so we've got a square wave there. 31 hertz. Let's see if we got us what our switch settings in. So yeah, I don't want to why it matter too much then. Um, okay, so now it says to remove A6 and A8 boards. And I'll check the A7 board again, U5, pin 9. So I've got to take out, that's U6 there, so say A6, oh, A8's already out, so A6, take this out. Back on, and I need um, U5 pin 9. 6, 7, 5 is over there. Let's try and get a clip on somewhere. This because I like to have a ground clip, even though I don't, probably don't even need it. Can't see what I'm doing, doing blind. All right, probably too short, but uh, pin 9, 2, 4. Seven pins, is it? Two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. So that'd be nine there. Pin nine. Uh, I'm getting a interesting level there. What's my probe set to anyway? I should look at my probe settings. Take the bandwidth limiting off. DC ten. Yeah. Okay. So. Nine. Well, I am interested. Am I offset? I think I am. Two volts of vision. So I'm getting yeah, I'm getting about five volts there. My bloody settings aren't right for my measurements. Hold on. 
measure statistics on what's it showing millivolts now I've got my body settings right on here oh, this is just done what do I want I miss and let's do maximum minimum okay Just give us more information so there we go so we're getting about 4.4 .4 volts at that point constantly so that's interesting So I'm just getting a constant voltage there. There is no waveform at this pin. Aha. Uh -huh. This might be an issue. This is a 74LS 74N. I think I've got some of those. Now apparently it's basically waveform. Let me find this data sheet for this and find out what the input pin is. Or even just look at the circuit diagrams. But I'm suspecting there's an issue on here. Unless it's just an issue with this not being seated correctly. I still don't trust this to be all the way in actually. I'm not convinced it is. It might be, but I'm not sure it is. Anyway. Um, so look again, I'll just wheel it around a little bit. So A5 or U5. I'm sure I'm counting quite the parts. It's got numbering, so five, pin nine. Yep, yeah, there's no way from there, it's just high. So that chip might be bad. I'm gonna have to trace back though and see if it's um if that's what it actually is or not. Oh I'm just trying to trace down this issue with this. U5 output not being there or not selecting properly. If I change ranges like the functions, it will change states from a high to a low, but it's not switching at all or anything like that. So it's a bit weird um, and it's not consistent. It doesn't do the same thing every time, so which you expect it to do. So it's got some issue. Now, what I've noticed is that on the reset pins and the clock pins, they're not getting the correct levels. Um, so if I look, go and look at what these are again. So the, the Reset pin is pin 1 and pin 13 of this chip here because they're paralleled up anyway. So, pin 1, I'm getting about 1.5 volts, which is not good. And 13 for the other side, same deal 1.44 volts getting there roughly. Well, 1.69 IMS, I'm getting a little bit of ripple or something in there. Yeah, 1.69 that side too. So, that's the Clock, um, but that's the reset pin, and that should be either zero volts or closer to zero volts or high. All right, so 1.5 volts is in that region where it may or may not be resetting, which is what I think could be going on here. Um, and I've got the uh, S pin, which is the I forgot what that does now. Yes. I can't remember, you know, set, is it set? I can't remember. Um, that's pin 4 and pin 10, I think. Yeah, pin 4 and pin 10, they've both got different inputs. So pin 4 is the one I'm interested in. It's also 1 volt. And pin 10, which is down there, that's 5 volts. So the 5 volt on that side is okay. This side is wrong. Now, if I trace these back, they actually come over here to I17, the inputs of I17, this is an inverter, but they just go to the inputs of that. So it's pin 4 and 5 and 9 and 10, they're paralleled up. So if we go to pin 4 on there, there we go, is that, the voltage there, 5, same thing there, that 1.5 volts. I'm actually getting 1.7 volts there. So this is a little bit interesting, there's a very slight differential in voltage, which might be a clue to what's going on. Um, and I want 9 and 10, so that'll be that one there. That's 1.4, 1.5. Oh, 
Put it on my pen down there. Just double checking both of them. Another power surge. Awesome. Um, 1.49 volts there. So that is the pin 4 input. 1.5 volts. Now I was trying to hope, I was hoping I was going to see a, diff, a different voltage between the two to tell me where the voltage is being dragged down or dragged up. Now this one's slightly higher. It's 1.49, 1.5-ish. I might need to use the multimeter on this. Let's see that differential. Let's clip this on somewhere. So DC volts, yep. Now this is where you need the digits. So 1.368, and it's jumping around slightly. 1.36 here, 1.368 thereabouts. Okay. 1.367, yeah, 1.367. Go to this side here. 1.361. Mm-hmm. This chip has got a higher voltage on the pin than here. That probably means this chip is shorting out internally and dragging it up. If I take this card out, pin 15 here, 1.5 volts, which is the pin 3 and 4 here. And I've also got pin 3 on the other side of that connector there. That side, pin 3, um, is this one here. So if I measure that now, I might even see a difference there now. And get to it. Three, just there. 1.36. So it's 1.36 exactly. And 1.362. And 1.368. Voltage is highest on U5. Now, as that signal is actually supposed to be a low signal. Um, it's being dragged upwards, means this chip here is likely shorting out and dragging it up. Um, and so the other signal I was looking at, which is on the pin 4 here, which is 1.572. That's pin 1 of this chip. 1.55. This one's different, this is a little bit different. It's 1.557. 1.55. Point five seven five five seven six seven seven. So this one's a little different. This one's a bit inconclusive. It could be getting dragged down, not up. So let's just measure again here. One point five eight one. It's jumping around a bit, eh? It's not making it easy. Five eight. 5.8 I can't tell from that which one's doing it 5.8 so this one seems lower so maybe that's supposed to be high and this one's dragging it down so it's that one's harder to tell, but it's jumping around. So I'm thinking that this chip here may have an issue. And it's dragging one line up, one line down. Maybe they're short together, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to ch change this chip here. I think I've got some. I'm going to check. If I've got a chip, I'll replace it and come back. Alright, so the only part I've got is a 7.4. SN7474N. I don't have the LS74. I found I don't know what the difference was. I might have to go and look that up. But that's what I've got. So I have to just see what this data sheet says before I take that part out in case it's not compatible. Okay, so I've just checked the data sheet and the difference between this one and the LS is that the LS can take 7 volts on its uh, input, whereas this can only take 5.5 volts. But from testing the circuitry, it's running on 5 volts anyway, so it should be fine. This one should work. There's a very slight difference on the actual timing as well for the uh, pulse timing. I think it's like 25 nanoseconds versus 30 nanoseconds. 
that may or may not make a difference probably not so I want to take the chip out carefully without damaging it um, which is a bit tricky because double sided ball wings on that so I've got to be really careful how to do that so I don't want to damage that chip any further in case it is actually okay and then I'll put a socket in and fit this chip and we'll see how we go from there alright so I've taken that chip out put a socket in there installed this other chip I've got which isn't exactly the right one but it's close and I've put the chip I've taken out into this tester so um, we shall see what happens if I'm going to use this tester this is supposed to identify chips there we go 740 less 74 it recognizes the chip so it means it's probably okay um, yeah that's what I think and if I do some testing on this I, well, I did that already just now but the um, it's behaving in the same way so this chip isn't hasn't changed anything from what I can tell at least but I'm gonna do the um, hardware test I've done that bit yet so it's, it's uh, check the digital circuits and plug that in be good go on in the slot so pop that down there and we shall put that switch onto position one and then we shall see what that does for it I should go through those hardware tests we'll see if anything else has changed Million parallel million. Okay, so oh, well, has that changed something or not? What did I have not working before? Yeah, million series million works. Yeah, so that's no different. That's exactly the same. Um, let's check capacitance range. What are we looking for in here. 2000 PF, yeah. So that looks exactly the same. That doesn't appear to have changed either. And Dutton's are looking for a few ranges being faulty. Michael Henry. Okay. Uh, so I've got various notes here. I am losing myself with these. Parallel. Oh, I've got it over here. Here we go. Parallel Micro Henry note series. Yes. So again, that's not changing anything. So I don't think that chip has actually um, done anything there, unfortunately. So I'll put the original one back in. Okay, so moving on, the next test, if I can see it, because the screen's has changed, don't want, is to get, so just the A8 board out, which I've done, so I've got the A6 board back in again. Um, now I'm supposed to be checking for digital signals on A7, pin 6R, 7R, 7R, uh, 8R, and 9R. Now, the descriptions initially weren't that clear, but it's it's got an L designation for the left an R designation for the right okay now it's also got letter and number designations numbers are on the front letters are on the back so that's how you know which pins you're supposed to be checking on so it's quite a little key thing there it's not obvious straight away so I've got to look for pins 6, 7, 8 and 9 on the front of the right hand connector so pin 5 is, is actually labelled so it makes it easier there's pin 6 so yes, there is a, uh, a signal there. Okay, there is definitely a digital signal there of some kind. So that's okay. Seven, digital signal on that one. Eight, there's digital signal on that one. I'm not worried about the triggering and stuff like that. I'm just looking for presence. 
Um, and I need to then check for DC level at U21 pin 4. I've already got prepared for this, I'm just rereading it and make sure you, <laughs> I've got it right. And so pin 4 should go from low to high and pin 9 and 11, sorry 9 and 13 should go from high to low when 15L is grounded. Now I've already got this prepared so I've got a little ground probe to thing here, it's clapped onto the chassis it's got a component leg stuck on here just a nice little convenient way of probing all right um i'm sure i could do probably better but this is what i've got set up so pin four now u21 is i think it's this one yes it is it's u21 there so pin four is here let's try and get on there hopefully that's slipping no nope, that's currently a low signal so if i then short pin L15, so that's L15 is on the front, fully right hand one. The only goes high, cool. That's 5 volt as well, that's right. So that checks out. Now I'm going to do 9 and 13 as well. And this is an 8 pin device, not a 7 pin, so pin 9 is now the bottom corner. That's currently high. Yep, yeah, that goes low, no problem. And then pin 13, so it's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Which is, I'm going to get on there. Low. Is it right? Have I got it right? 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That's been 13. Interesting. Pin 13 is supposed to be high. So that's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That is not high. Hold on, my cat needs sorting out. She's stuck in a corner, she's lost. Come on, let's go. Silly thing. Right. Um, she's sitting in a corner looking at a wall and she was trying to get out. Anyway, go figure. That cat's not all there. So, pin 13 is supposed to be high and go low when I pull that pin light. But that isn't happening. Because it's already low. Which is a little interesting. So let's just do it again. Alright, so definitely pin IC21. Nine is already high. That should go low. Which it does. Ten. So again there's that one volt level there which I think I was playing around before and if I put the A8 card back in again, that one volt level disappears. So it seems to just be because it's not being um, pulled low by the previous card. Um, I'm guessing the control signals on it anyway. So it's, that's pin 11, which has a signal. So that's probably okay. Pin 12 has a signal. Pin 13 is low. Now it's high. May want to stay in trouble getting a decent connection. No, now I'm getting it really easily. That's interesting. That may be an issue there. And that goes low when I pull that down. So, now it's. And that's low again. What's going on there? No. Something interesting there, isn't there? That's definitely low again. Might be because these threshold voltages. Maybe me probing it has affected a little bit. Something funny going on there. I think I'm going to have to look into that one a bit more. Okay, so pin 13 of uh, U21. Let's look at this again. 
right, pin 13, so 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Now it's high. What's going on? Now it's gone low, it stayed low. This is interesting. Um, so I believe this is a NOR gate. 74LS79. Okay, so I've got to check on pin 15 and 14 to see what those inputs are doing. And I should basically be, well, 14 and 10 should be the same, so I'll check those first. Though. So there's 10, which is sitting at 1 volt. This one's pulling down. And 14 is the other pin, so that's that one there. Again, sitting at 1 volt, should pull down. And it is. Okay. Now. Pin 15 is the pin 13 input, so that's that on there. So that's currently high. I wonder if it's just a threshold of this voltage on um, this pin 14, which is causing an issue. Now, if I go to pin 11 and 12, strangely, it's both of them. 11 and 12, that's the waveform, and so is that one. And that goes high. They both go high. And stay high. Is that right? Hmm. No, that's the waveform again. So it looks like it's changing. Is it to do to do range hold? Does that change anything? I wonder. I want to do the ranging changing around. I'm trying to run it solo ranging in the background. I wonder if that's possible. But those should be similar. Right, I need to check U20 because that's an that's a uh, NAND gate. I want to see what's going on at U20, see if that makes sense or not. So 1, 2, 4 and 5 are inputs. So there's one. And that's got a waveform. This is going to be interesting. That's got a waveform. That's got a waveform. And that's got a waveform. Okay, so there should be a waveform coming out then of pin 6. Which is that one there. And there is. And that's what should be going to 11 and 12, that's correct. So now to check the other section of U20, which is 9, 10, 13, and 12. So 9 is high, 10 is waveform, uh, 12 is a waveform. 13 is a waveform. Uh -huh. So it could be a coincidence of those waveforms coming together. So pin 8 is the output, which is currently a square wave. Pin 15 is the same square wave. So those look okay. Um, So it's that pin 14 which is the puzzling part there. That's that one volt level. Maybe it's just not quite high enough. See that's now high and low. I mean it does do it but maybe it's just the threshold thing. Um, right. So if I find a pin which is high, maybe I can, that pin there is high, so if I touch those two together, that might trigger it over, let's do that, do that, 
Yeah, no, it's high. There might just be a threshold thing on this IC for that one volt level causing problems. Yeah, that's what it'll be. It's nothing. It's fine. So I think it should be pulling up to 5 volts when there's no input on that pin. But it's not doing that. And it may be what's causing some of these weird um, differences in the test procedure. So that's something to watch out. When I saw that 1 volt level there, I mean, it was something's about 1.5 volts or something, isn't it? So have a look. Um, 1.69 volts right now. So. As I said before, when earlier on when I was doing those testing, it's like, well, that's not a great voltage to have because it's on or off depending on how it's been influenced externally. It's not a good voltage. It should be, you know, less than half a volt ideally, and greater than three volts ideally in order to get a nice solid on or off state. So, because it's floating in that middle region there, it's it's maybe causing some erroneous. Um, test procedures. So, I don't know what why it's like that. I'm not quite sure. I wonder if there's supposed to be a pull up on there or something. Hmm. Anyway, so that seems to be okay after all, because if I can get that to toggle properly, then it seems to be all right. So it looks like I'm chasing something which isn't actually there, but it's a good thing to watch out for. Alright, so the next thing I've got to do, the next step, now I've seen to work through that confusing point, is I've got to check for a display here of like a L, reverse L, so it's like the middle one, upper bar of the segment, and then triple eight on display. So if there's the A8, A8 ball removed still, which it is, and I've got to. Um, TP4 and A3 pin CL. I've got to find those. This is going to be interesting. Well, I'm going to have to reconfigure this first. I'll come back. Okay, the next part here relies on me. I've got to... Actually, I'm off to do this differently. It's not going to work. Um, so these on the back of the board has got letter designators, right? But only partially. It's a bit weird. Now, this is AL, AR. So, the sim, you know, left and right, pin A. Now it goes on this. If I look at this card here. It says A. I don't, don't need. Don't think you'll be able to see it in the camera. But it goes A, B, C, D. That's fine because D's there. But if you look at this card here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's got H on it. Um, or is it meaning that one? It probably means that one actually. But then even then, you got an S. The last pin is an S. Well, S isn't the 15th letter um, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K has got an M on it uh, what? <laughs> so now I don't know which pen's which uh, that's really weird so I've got to try and find that in a manual and see if it tells you how to identify those pins because that doesn't make sense. That's really odd. Okay, so according to the circuit diagram for this board, KL goes to pin 27 U18, which is this big device over here, which I'm, I really hope hasn't got a problem because you won't be able to get one. Um, and so I've got a pin 27 on that and I'll trace across these tabs on the back here or this edge ball connector and I should be able to find out which pin is KL oh, that's it. looks like it just carry on just in case there's something else this probes had it, I need to get new probes let's double check yeah that one there so that one here is KL. It would seem. So that is one next to H. Is that right? I keep losing the bloody spot. So the one next to H is K. Go figure. There's no I, no J. It would seem. Right. So I, have to, I just have to make sure I short out the correct one, because if I do the wrong one, it'll be a problem potentially. 
Now, well, I'll have to ground it, should I say. I should use the correct wording. So let's plug this in. Now I've got to try and grind, ground two different pens at once. Let's get the, the description back up again. Okay, so there's two steps to this, which I may not have mentioned before. Um, one is to check for this display, the other is to check this display. So um, I need to get another ground point. So I need to gra ground A3 TP4, which I need to find. and. Yep, it's TP4. Sometimes it's easy to see it shine a light through from the back because it silhouettes it. It's easy to see it. So if I ground TP4, like so, and then grind, ground CL, which is one of the ones which was easy to find because I can see where D is. Uh, if you see, I need to light on it because I can't see what I'm doing. That should be C there. If I ground that and ground that, Yep, that's correct. Doesn't mention this one place though, but that's okay, it's doing the correct thing. So now I've got to do CL and KL instead to bring it over here. Okay, so I need another. I can I bend this to do both at once? Maybe that'll work. Let's try that, shall we? Again, I can't see what I'm doing. Let's see, where's the other one? Oh, I can't see the bloody thing. Can't see a thing. This is ridiculous. Hold on a second. Stop flashing. Just turn on. Right, that one there. So if I try and get this set up. Do that pin there and that pin there, it's almost right. Let's bend this slightly more then. Those two pins there, like that, that should do it. Or not. Okay. Try it again. I don't know why it's got me testing this card anyway, because I mean the display seems to work. But anyway, alright, this is part of the process. I'm pretty sure I'm in the right place there. Let's check again. That pin there, that pin there. Well, no. That is a little confusing. Not quite sure how to proceed with that. I need to think about that. Because. I'm not 100% sure that KO pins right. I'm fairly sure. But not 100%. I can probably move on a minute. I know the display is working and it is displaying this digits and stuff like that, so I may not even need to worry about it. I mean, it is a display driver card, so I think I might just not bother with that piece and just carry on. 